to and today guys welcome back to another episode of conspiracy theories with ike that is right today guys we're going to jump into a theory um we'll talk about it here in just a second but first i want to give a special thanks to everybody out there who's continuing to subscribe to us i want to thank you all very 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 much for getting us to 200 subscribers i talked about it a little bit last week and on last week's podcast um and obviously check out this week's podcast too if you haven't but Thank you so much for continuing to subscribe to Geek Stew and continuing to want to watch me talk about random shit with conspiracy theories. I have enjoyed doing it so, so much, and I am planning to continue to do this as much as humanly possible. So, we'll continue to do this. Let's go. But, today guys, um, we're going to be talking about a little bit of a uh, a theory about uh, the music scene, if you will. This one um, has a lot to do with the, uh, it's called rap.mp3. So you've probably heard about this before if you've ever looked on any conspiracy theory forum. So this conspiracy theory is one of those ones where there are a lot of different things that it could be, but nothing that's been actually proven. There are currently three popular theories about rap.mp3 that we're going to be talking about today, but let's get into it. Let's talk about rap.mp3. Stop and listen. First and foremost, I want to give a very, very, very quick notice that this theory, as well as the theories inside of the theory, do talk about death and suicide. So, if you are not in the proper mental space to handle those topics, don't watch today's episode. I'm not going to be offended. I would rather you be a perfectly fine, healthy human being rather than watching my video today. So so there you go. Trigger warning right in your face, right here. Uh, this is, I guess, the context, if you will, for this episode, but I'm just giving it to you right now. Don't watch this video if you cannot handle talk about death, suicide, and just things within that realm, all right? So let's get into it. Let's get into the theory. Here we go. already but there are three theories that are inside of the phrase rap.mp3 so we're going to break it down theory by theory and then i'm going to after each theory i'm going to give you a little bit of my thoughts on how or if it is possible um, or maybe not if it's possible per se but if i believe that it's true or if there is any truth to it so keep that in mind that i will do that after each theory and then at the very very end i will give some final thoughts kind of just over encompassing everything but we're gonna start with theory number one. Theory number one for rap.mp3 has to do with a missing person. The theory purports that there was a missing person. This missing person's phone was discovered and on this phone there was one audio file so I'm going to give you three guesses what the audio file was called. It was called rap.mp3. The origins of this that I could find that there were some old like texts from the old days where people would send out text messages about oh they found this audio file on someone's phone and it's said to induce suicide or have subliminal messaging and things of that nature so a lot of people kind of tie it back to the early 2000s and those trends that we saw with people sending mass text messages um, you know forwarding messages and stuff like that so keep that in mind but basically the audio has the possibility of again inducing suicide due to secret codes and subliminal messaging inside of the audio file itself now this one's pretty short and concise the other two have a little bit more detail to it but this one is exactly what it sounds like they found the phone of a missing person it had this audio file on it and anybody who does it bada bing bada boom it causes issues so 
Do I think that this is real? Not really. I think this is probably one of those, you know, four to five friends if you don't want to die tonight messages from the early 2000s. Um, I think that the big thing about this is that it's interesting. It has a lot of attention draw to it, especially as a conspiracy theory. One of the biggest things that you have to have for a conspiracy theory is for it to be interesting. Sounds like a creepypasta. And those were popular in the 2000s. I love creepypastas, don't get me wrong. But don't think it's so real. I think it's more of a creepypasta slash story. But nonetheless, it's still something to talk about. It's still one of the, the uh, I guess you could say, theories within the theory here. Um, but let me know what you think about that down below. But let's move into theory number two. Theory number two specifically has to do with subliminal messaging. So if you've ever listened to songs, any kind of music from any genre, even sometimes crossing genres, a lot of music reuses and recycles audio. Um, I'll get to that in a little bit in a second, but this theory basically says that there is a 13 second audio that essentially every rapper uses in their music. Um, specifically rappers because this is rap.mp3. So this 13 second audio, um, basically it's used to subliminally manipulate their listeners to either continue to listen to their music, support them and buy their CDs or records, or I guess you can't really, I mean, I guess you can buy music on Apple or what is it, iTunes? I, I don't know, I have Apple Music and Spotify, so I really don't buy music anymore. But the point being is that the 13 second audio was used for the specific purpose of subliminal messaging. And this 13 uh, second audio, sometimes it's correlated and tied back to like devil worship and a tool of the devil, if you will. That's obviously been an ongoing trend since the 70s, subliminal messaging and heavy metal music and things like that. But supposedly this is a um, 13 second clip of audio that controls or manipulates the listeners. Now, as I mentioned, it is a well-known uh, thing that basically everybody who has ever listened to music knows that a lot of different musicians reuse the same beats and rhythms. I actually put a video down below that kind of gives an example of this. There are a lot of these. So I think that this one is believable to the respect that a lot of people do reuse clips, audios, and little snippets. I think this one has more to do with like the mind control aspect of it because they're using this 13 second audio as an attempt to manipulate their listeners. But the specific, you know, people reusing the same audio, that's believable. A lot of people do that specifically in the uh, video that I attached down below in the description. It actually is talking about the, like a drum beat that's used in essentially every popular uh, pop song today, basically. Like there are Maroon 5 songs, uh, like the Chainsmokers. Uh, I think there was like a Cardi B song, uh, Little Nas X. I mean, literally, there's like, I think there's like 15 songs on that one video that he used that have the same drum line, basically. So I'm not musically inclined, so I apologize if I use the wrong terminology there. So. In that respect, I definitely feel like that this theory, the, the subliminal messaging theory, could have some basis in reality because it's no mystery that music does reuse popular lines, clips, things like that. So it's not beyond the possibility of belief that there are a bunch of rap musicians who reuse those things. With that being said, I think it's also <laughs> important to remember here that the idea of like subliminal messaging and um, things like that have been around for decades. So this could just be a recycled theory from like the 70s and 80s when they were like, oh, heavy metal music is, uh, if you play it backwards, it says Satan and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so you get the idea that I don't think that there is actually any real proof of that per se, but subliminal messaging isn't an unheard thing and it's not an unheard theory. But with that being said, Let's move into theory number three. So the third and final theory, which I think personally might be the most realistic. Uh, uh, let, let's get to that in a second. Realism aside, let's get into that in a second. So rap.mp3, specifically on this iceberg, it's referenced as uh, Memphis occultism. So if you've never listened to Memphis rap, 
then you may not know, but a lot of 90s Memphis rap references the occult and satanic, if you will, imagery and concepts. So that's that's a fact. 90s Memphis rap did in fact reference the occult, satanic rap. It's not that surprising because a lot of those have deep roots like in, you know, the blues and everything else. And that all ties back to like selling your soul to the devil like Robert Johnson, I think it was, did back way when. So that's, that's a story as long as time itself, selling your soul to the devil to be, you know, popular. And so Memphis occultism and Memphis rap has oftentimes reference back to this. Now, specifically, the M the rap.mp3 refers to a Memphis rap group. There have been multiple that I found that this referred to. I'm not going to actually put blame on any specific rap group because there were like f five or six rap groups that when I Googled like what I'm about to say came up with. So like, I don't know specifically which one anyone's pointing their finger at per se, but Specifically, it says that there was a Memphis rap group that uh, basically, they allegedly murdered someone and the theory reports that they used the sounds of the murder in the background of an album. So, rap.mp3, kind of similar to like, I guess the subliminal messaging one. This one's just more dark, I guess you could say. They killed someone, somehow caught it on audio and then implanted that audio into the background of an album. So, I mean, take that for what you will. So this one again has some backing. It references the satanic and the occult. And in the 90s, Memphis rap music was very, had some very heavy influences, I would say, in some of those ideologies. I'm not gonna say all of them, but some of them talk about, you know, I sold my soul to the devil. You know, they have all occult symbols and stuff on their album covers. Obviously, that's a whole longer conspiracy theory that I did, didn't really want to get into. But yeah, but I did also attach an audio below that kind of goes into that a little bit or a video, I should say, down below that talks a little bit more about Memphis occultism and the I think it was called Memphis sigils. So there's a whole line of uh, videos about this out there that you could look up for Memphis rap. But kind of to touch on why I think this one is more real. Um, basically, there's there. I mean, it's no mystery that again, Memphis rap had those heavy ties to the occult and had those ties to possible satanic things. And I'm not coming from this from the perspective of like, oh, them rappers they're out here trying to teach my kids about the occult. You know, I'm not doing that. That's not what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to say is that this does exist in that culture and in the 90s it was very prevalent. It's not an issue because it was most likely done for novelty's sake. Um, but if I were to have killed someone and like, I guess, wanted to satisfy some sadistic urge and I was like some like, you know, rapper or prominent artist, I guess it would make sense that someone would want to slip that into the background of an album just to... I guess satisfy myself I don't know that that's a whole thing that we could get into too. the kind of the, the physiology of that but I'm not gonna do that the point being is that I could see this happening definitely could um, one thing I will add though one small thing is if you google this there are a lot of like groups that are being blamed for possibly killing someone like not like a specific individual but like you you google like rap group kills person there's like a bunch of people who who like have potential like claims against them and i don't know that that just strikes me as a little odd so that's why i said that this is a little bit possibly more possible because there seems to be a lot of people who fall into this very specific category of memphis rap groups who may have murdered someone i don't know but we're not gonna get that i don't want anybody to come for me so <laughs> moving on to final thoughts um just to keep in mind that this is the three theories about what rap mp3 is the memphis rap and memphis occultism is specifically referenced on this iceberg so i believe that that's what the iceberg is specifically talking about but i wanted to bring up the other two because um there were a lot of people who talked about different thoughts and theories um in the reddit threads that kind of gave me the inspiration for this but 
enough about that. Let's move into final thoughts. So it's been fun to get to talk a little bit about Rapta MP3. Rapta MP3 uh, has a lot of different theories that go with it. I found a couple other that could possibly have related to this, but I decided not to talk about them because I felt like they could be their own theories that are completely separate from this, or they have other ties to other theories in the iceberg, I thought. So, you know, I'll probably talk, come, probably reference back to this in the future. But this was a fun one to really research because that last part about the Memphis occultism really kind of took me by surprise. Um, you know, it was one of those things where I was re researching it and I'm like, wow, there's actually quite a bit of stuff out there that relates to this. And you don't really see that often, especially with uh, theories this far down in the iceberg, if I remember correctly. This is a, one of the more bottom tiers. Uh, and speaking of the iceberg, if I don't know if I said it in the beginning or not, thank you, Cicada205, for the amazing iceberg. Uh, and like I said, it's probably down here somewhere. The Wrapped MP3, Memphis Cultism, yada, yada, yada. But I also have to give another special thank you to um, Omicron03. Omicron03, I think I got that right. Um, he or they were a Redditor um, commenting some of the information. They actually gave me basically the starting point for a lot of my research. Um, they gave me, I would say, the, the <laughs> they gave me the tools to kind of further research because I was kind of lost. I, I knew about the Memphis occultism a little bit. Like I've listened to Memphis rap before. I've listened to music from the 90s that are from that area, but I didn't really know about the other two theories and Omicron 03 gave me that information that allowed me to continue to do further research, dig a little bit deeper and dive even further down the rabbit hole. So thank you very much, whoever you are. If you wanna reach out to me, I would love to talk to you sometime, um, but I definitely appreciate the resources you posted on the thread. Um, definitely appreciative because without that, I would have had no idea about the other two theories other than of course the you know Memphis occultism. So as we get into final thoughts, I wanna thank you again all for continuing to watch and support the channel. I'm trying to get better and better about doing these videos, trying to stay a little more on topic and a little more concise. Um, I know sometimes I like to ramble, so I'm trying to do a little bit better with that, but I thank you all for continuing to support me. Also, somebody commented this the other day, I'm working on getting a better microphone for this, but right now I'm basically just using a, uh, a Apple iPhone microphone. Um, and I have it set up where it's right in front of my mouth here. You can't see, it's just, just below the shot, but it's set up to where I'm speaking directly at it. So hopefully the audio has been okay with these last couple of videos. If it's not, don't worry, I'm working on getting a better microphone, I promise. Um, I actually found one, it's a lapel mic pretty awesome um so i'll probably eventually have that so that way it's a little bit of a better audio experience for the people who are listening but until then thank you for working with me thank you for continuing to support me we're gonna go ahead and leave it there thank you for watching like and subscribe follow on social media you don't want to miss anything that we're going to be doing in the future i kind of mentioned it in last week but the 200 subscribers video is going to be great it's coming next month we're also continuing to work on improving the uh, controversy podcast we want to start looking at getting guests on the show we'll probably have talked about that but if not we want to start getting guests on the show so if you want to ever appear on the channel or appear on the controversy podcast let us know but for now stay safe stay happy stay healthy stay awesome and we will see you in the next one see ya